You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Are you struggling to skyrocket your career? Do you often miss the opportunity to get promoted? Or do you feel that you're trapped in a cycle of career stagnation? This is Promotion Protocol with your host, Dr. Kim Nugent. Kim is here with over 30 years experience as an innovative leadership coach, and she's helping people gain the confidence, communication skills, and success in their careers to ultimately assist them in enhancing their promotability. So now, please welcome the host of Promotion Protocol, Kim Nugent. I'm your host, Dr. Kim Nugent, and you're listening to Promotion Protocol. We're coming to you live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I'm very excited about my guest today. I actually have a panel of young professionals. And one of the things that I talk about often when I'm out speaking is the fact that I don't like stereotypes. And I certainly don't uh, believe that anyone wants to be stereotyped regardless of what age you are in the workforce today but I think these three people in particular are very special and so our first guest today is Jared McNulty who is a native Texan born and raised in Houston where he still resides and he attended Cypher High School graduated with honors from Texas A&M University received a biomedical science degree and now works for healthcare private equity for U.S. Anesthesia Partners as their Director of Strategy. He's an avid sports fan, and you can find him supporting his Aggies and hometown Texans, Astros, and Rockets during his downtime. So welcome, Jared. Thank you, Dr. Nugent, for having me. My next guest is Crystal Delgado, and she's an employment counseling and trial attorney practicing at an international law firm based out of Chicago, Cyworth Shaw. Before practicing law, she obtained her bachelor's degree from University of Texas, Austin, and a JD degree from Texas Tech. She took a couple of years off between the time she obtained her degree to work and travel in Tokyo, Japan. Today, Crystal still likes to travel and recently has been enjoying runcations with a group of local runners where she's traveled to Portland, Miami, and Germany for various races over the last year. She's also a proud new mom of her first dog named Roxy, who she's taught to shake and wave over the holidays. My third guest is Frank Childs, who has over 11 years of oil and gas industry experience, and he provides a solid background of supply chain management, inventory control, warehousing, distribution, and logistics. Frank is currently the Global Director of Inventory and Assets for National Oil Well Varco, where his primary responsibilities include ensuring NOV's inventory and assets are used as efficiently as possible everywhere in the world with a focus on reducing working capital. Mr. Childs earned his bachelor's degree in marketing and management from Texas Tech University. So welcome, everyone. Welcome, Crystal and Frank. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Hello. All right. So we're going to start. And Jared, I'm going to start with you. I would just like to say, you know, the first time I met you, I was very impressed with you. So what do you attribute to your success? Uh, you know, honestly, for me, uh, it all goes back to uh, growing up in a, a positive family environment, uh, having parents and a wonderful stepmother uh, that instilled uh, proper life values in me, work ethic, uh, not taking anything for granted. And e- even though my mom and dad divorced when I was young, uh, they remained committed to uh, giving me and my brother that nurturing environment. And, and didn't let anything come between them. And, and, and that, for me, uh, was a big deal in, in my steps and progress throughout my uh, growing up. Well, kudos to them. So I'm sure they're very proud of you and what you've been able to accomplish so far in the healthcare industry. I hope so. <laughs> Crystal, what about you? Uh, what do you attribute to your success, particularly in the legal field? Um, I would say that 
I would not be who I am today without the unconditional love of my parents. They're definitely my rock. Um, they had nine kids, juggled work, wow. and they ran us all around town for tennis lessons, piano lessons, Sunday school, and looking back, I truly have no idea how they did it. So <laughs> they did so much for us and with very, very little means, and they taught me by their actions really how to work hard for what I want. So I've really, humble beginning. We drove around in a station wagon like all my life, or at least until we outgrew it. We actually had three different station wagons. <laughs> so there was no allowance or, you know, hey, mom, can I borrow 100 bucks to buy something super frivolous that I don't even need? I just, I knew from a very early age, based on the example of my parents, you know, if I wanted something in life, you know, period, I'd, I had to work really hard for it. And I think that's definitely an important lesson, but also a lifelong lesson that I'm sure many individuals carry with them. So I appreciate that. And I'm sure your family's very proud of you as well. Oh, they are. They tell me all the time. I'm the favorite of the nine. <laughs> <Just joking. laughs> yes, I hope the other eight are not listening. <laughs> or you'll have something else to talk about no, after the show. Good. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> and Frank, what do you attribute to your success? I attribute to my success, um, you know, being the hardest worker in the room, um, no matter what room I'm in. And I think my teams that I've worked with over the years um, would concur with that statement, um, you know, leading by example uh, and really learning something new every day, uh, which is not always easy to do, you know, whether that's coming in early, staying late. Um, you know, working with the different individuals on those teams, um, because success oftentimes is not just you, but it's, you know, um, you know, the whole. So, um, you know, being the hardest worker and, you know, really doing the things that maybe others aren't willing to do, coming in extra early, staying extra late, um, you know, to make sure the, the uh, task gets accomplished. I think those are really great examples. I think the other thing that you said is to try to come in every day and learn something new. And I would say that probably separates all three of you from some other people, maybe in the workforce today, from the standpoint of, I know that, uh, you know, I talk often on this show about some of the really, I'd say, dismal statistics in the workplace today. And um, these numbers really haven't changed in the last 15 years. But uh, if you look at SHRM or Conference Board or Gallup, what they say is about 87% of workers in the U.S. today are disengaged, and <clears throat> Dr. Marshall Goldsmith actually says we're asking the wrong questions. That companies are always having a conversation about how do we engage our employees, and Dr. Goldsmith actually says we should be asking employees how are you going to engage yourself. And that example that you just said, Frank, about looking to learn something new every day is really all about engagement. So you keep yourself motivated, you keep your others motivated, and I think if if more of us did that every single day, we'd certainly be more satisfied in the roles that we had and that's what I'm in that's what I'm encouraged by all three of you is that you're working in a field that you love and that you know you go to work excited every single day to do something else and make a difference in, the, in our world so thank you all for doing that so my next question is not crystal this time I'm going to start with you and my next question is what was the most important lesson that you learned in law school for me, I learned to always be prepared. Um, most law schools, they teach using a method called the Socratic method, which is what they would refer to as a form of this cooperative, argumentative dialogue between the professor and the student. And it's really to stimulate critical thinking, draw out ideas. But the truth is, it's absolutely terrifying. And for a newbie law student, it's um, that don't people that don't have a clue about what they're doing, you can get uh, feel defeated. Um, but I'll tell you that the experience of having to be prepared for class has taught me um, how I've carried that into my professional life. Um, as a female minority attorney, I'd say being prepared is also very key because we're challenged in ways that maybe our male counterparts may not be. Um, okay. And I'm challenged frequently as a young lawyer. Um, to make sure that, you know, to be on my best game and, and to always be, always be prepared. 
Great. Well, we're going to pick up this question with Frank and Jared when we come back from a commercial break. So stay tuned. and We'll be back in a few minutes. Baby boomers face many challenges, and sometimes you have to reinvent yourself in order to stay on top. Sharon Ball, nurse practitioner and Christian life and wellness coach, can help. Sharon has written a book called Reinventing Yourself Today, and it can help you through the pangs of changing the course of your life. Whether you are looking to stay on track with new goals, a sensible program to help you shed unwanted pounds, or a full kick-butt life reinvention sharon can work with you follow your passions and live each day according to your dreams and free yourself from the expectations of others sharon comes from the heart and shares her own personal journey to reinvention with her clients other self-help books inspired her but few gave her the steps to improve her life so she created a plan that works stress no more let sharon ball open the door Sign up for a complimentary life reinvention consultation today at tinyurl.com forward slash get started for free for more of what life has in store. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back. This is BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and you're listening to Promotion Protocol, hosted by Dr. Kim Nugent. And as I said in our last segment, I introduced our panel today. And uh, the question that we just left Crystal with was the most important lesson that she had actually learned in law school. And certainly being prepared and that hard work has you know, helped her transfer those skills into her law practice today. So, Jared, what would you say is the most important lesson that you learned in college? Uh, for me personally, it was um, how to effectively manage time. Um, you know, these are the first true years when you're really entirely in charge of your own schedule. Uh, you know, you have to learn how to properly balance your primary studies along with, you know, just lifestyle commitments and making sure you get time for yourself, recreation or whatnot. And being able to effectively uh, do this really sets the foundation for your um, effective maturation and, you know, being an adult. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Yes, time management is key, <laughs> no matter where you are today. And time probably to watch those sports uh, teams that you follow, for sure. That's the hardest one. You know, Saturday is, i got to block it out. Okay, I figured. All right, well, thank you for being on the show today <laughs> and making mm-hmm. time for us. <laughs> so, Frank, what do you attribute the most important lesson uh, that you learned in college? Yeah, I just want to kind of piggyback on Jared's answer. I thought that was great, but, um, similar, but different, um, financial commitments for me, financial understanding, um, you know, starting to pay your own bills, pay your own rent. Um, you know, if you don't pay it, it's going to get tired and turned off. You start to learn these things <laughs> the hard way. Um, and you know, kind of the ties into that as well. Um, I had an economics professor that I absolutely loved and he really got me to fall in love with real estate. And so I now have four, rental properties and I, I wouldn't be where I am right now without that financial understanding or that, you know, that foundation that I learned in college. Well, I think that's really key. And it's amazing to me, not really, because I don't think we really address it in high school unless you're fortunate enough to have a professor that kind of inspired you in some ways. I also think it's possible that many students who leave college uh, don't have a good understanding of financial literacy. And they, that's, that trait or lack thereof carries into your life also when you're in your career as well. So a good and important lesson that you learned early on. That's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to move on to my third question, and uh, it's really what is your ideal work environment? You know, to me, 
my commitment is to help people find their dream job and love going to work every day and being passionate about that, as opposed to going down the freeway and thinking, I don't want to go to work today. So what is your ideal work environment, Frank? I'm with a great company right now, National Oil Varco. Um, just took on a new role uh, three months ago, and you know it's it's really been a great work environment. And it's, there's clear communication. Uh, people are constantly over communicating. You know where you stand, good, bad, and different. Maybe because I'm a new guy, but um, and then it's an environment where people are constantly building each other up, saying, "Hey, you need anything?" There's there's a great teamwork environment. And really not putting each other down, which, you know, I have seen in previous roles, and that's, you know, extremely unhealthy. So as far as ideal work environment for me, I think I'm there. Um, you know, I think I, I found my dream job, and you know, I'm very happy where I'm at. That's great. And I think that, you know, when you said communication, I know it's personally important to you, but I would say that's probably the number one issue in most organizations today that they don't communicate enough. And the second thing that you said in terms of building people up is really important. I just saw a statistic uh, at the end of last year that said last year, 62 percent of employees never received a thank you or any any gesture of appreciation. So the fact that you're working in an environment where people are being built up, I'm sure that that also attributes to productivity, satisfaction, and retention because people don't leave organizations because they feel great. They leave organizations because their manager has not made them feel that they're a part of that team. So, yay, I'm so happy for you. Yeah, thank you. So, Jared, I'm going to go to you next. So what is your ideal work environment? For, for me, and you know, I also um, am in mine right now as well, my ideal work environment um, is one where my superiors give me what's what I call supportive autonomy. Um, you know, they hired you for a reason. You, you apply for that job for a reason. They hired you for a reason. They know you can do the job. And so, um, you know, I, I really do well when you have the freedom uh, to act upon your own ideas. I believe this, you know, creates a stronger sense of ownership when you deploy the action plan. And and over a long-term period, it can prevent, you know, box burnout. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you're just trying to meet a status quo and you don't really feel like you you can act upon your own ideas and you're just always trying to uh, please the guy above you, uh, you can kind of get burnt out and think that, you know, it's not really you doing the job. So I think autonomy for me and trust from the superiors is, is ultimately very important. I think that's a key point that you just mentioned in terms of some of, I would say, you know, there are definitely about 20 leadership skills that are lacking for many people. And one of those is uh, particularly for founding members of organizations, because they founded that organization, they did everything themselves, right? And so when they grow an organization to 200, 300 plus employees, Some of those same skills, they don't give up. And one of those skills, it looks, it's called micromanagement or lack of delegation, which doesn't give the employees the opportunity to be autonomous and go and do the job that they were hired to do in the first place. So I'm so glad that you're working in an awesome environment that allows you the opportunity to contribute in your way. So that's fantastic. That's exactly right. Crystal, what about you? Your ideal work environment. I would say a beach with a margarita <laughs> is the ideal work environment. But um, but if I can't have that, uh, um, you know, what Jared and Frank said, you know, is, is really true for me as well. Positive and folks, clear, effective communication. But I'll say not to get too granular for me personally, um, I want to work at a company that evaluates me on a basis that can be somewhat objective. And I, the reason why that is important for me is so much of what we do as attorneys and advising clients to, to grade on that on an annual basis, it, it can be very subjective. So what I like personally from what what my law firm does, we, um, we have essentially a, a, a set of boxes um, they're like stacked three in the bottom, three in the middle, three in the top. And as we navigate through our careers, um, there is a set 
narrative in place. So if we, as we want to get promoted and as we get promoted through the years, we know what is expected of us. It's very clear. Right. And, and so for me, that is, that is very important. Great, Crystal. I appreciate that. So we're going to come back and continue our conversation with Jared and Crystal and Frank in just a few minutes, but it's time to take a short break. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305 705 3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. You're listening to Promotion Protocol Live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Dr. Kim Nugent, and welcome back to our show. And I have the privilege of having three young professionals today who are doing extraordinary things in the workforce, and there's such great, talented people. And I'm so happy that they're on the show today. And so I want to jump back into asking you all questions. And I think this is important for our more senior managers to know about what's important to you in terms of how do you want to be coached or mentored, um, because that's an important segment today of really staying with an organization. So I'm going to start with you, Frank. Okay. Uh, when being coached, um, played on a lot of sports teams throughout my life. And um, when, I, when I'm being coached, I want brutal honesty. Um, you know, give it to me raw, give it to me uncut, you know, be as, be as, you know, straightforward or, you know, if it's going to hurt my feelings or, you know, let's get to the point because I, I want to be the best. I want to be the best at my craft, the best at what I do. And then oftentimes, you know, bosses I've had are maybe not as honest as they need to be. And then mm. the second piece that I like when being coached is consistency. So whether we meet monthly or quarterly or annually, um, you know, we'll, we'll set up those parameters and say, Hey, you know, this is when you're going to be coached and then it falls through the cracks or doesn't happen. People get busy. And so, you know, I prefer that consistency and that constant follow up just to know where I stand and how am I going to get better? And I also do some managing up to, you know, help them as well. Mm -hmm. So where I can, so, um, you know, that, that's what's best for me. Well, I think you mentioned two great words, consistency and follow-up, and that's where people get disappointed or frustrated at the job if those two components are not there. So thank you for that. What about you, Crystal? How do you like to be mentored? Well, these days um, I'm finding that the most ideal coaching environment for me is to be partnered with a more senior attorney. Um, I'd say – so when I was more green in my field, when I just had come out of law school, it's, at least in my opinion, I don't think it's the most ideal to partner a very junior lawyer with a very senior lawyer. Um, sometimes you, it can be very frustrating. And so having maybe mm-hmm. someone that's like a new partner, the, the mentorship relationship, there may, they may be able to remember and reflect more, oh, when I was new, when I was an associate, these are all the stuff I didn't know, I should be patient. 
Um, but now that I've entered kind of a more um, mid range of my, my career, I'd say that it's, it's an incredibly rewarding mentorship relationship with me now when I'm partnered with a, with a well-seasoned lawyer, because, um, you know, I do 99% of the work and I get, you know, the amazing wisdom and advice from a, a 30 plus 40 plus year lawyer that can direct and protect, you know, put my, essentially all my work goes from, from an A to an A plus. And, and it's, I could never have gotten it to where um, I could never have perfected my work or been able to achieve um, whatever, you know, ultimate goal we were trying to achieve, depending on whatever project we're doing without that, you know, well-seasoned lawyer's advice and, and, and patience to, to help me. So, um, so yeah, so for me, for mentorship, and I think it, as I was saying, I think it really evolved depending on Mm -hmm. what, what time in your career, like I said before, I think I I would have answered this completely different if you had asked me this, um, five years ago. Well, I think that's a great point. I think, uh, for those that are listening and you happen to be the senior manager or you have a mentoring program inside your organization, I think the point is to remember to be able to make that match so that that person can remember what it was like when they first started so they can share the wisdom of that. The other thing is if you have a choice and you get to choose your mentor, kind of keeping those parameters in mind so that that matching can be as successful, again, to take you to the next level that you couldn't get there on your own. So thank you for that. And Jared, what about you? How do you want to be coached or mentored in your role? You know, I think, I think for me, it's um, I want to be coached what I call uh, directly, but not dominantly. Uh, you know, I appreciate honest critiques on where I can improve. I know that I have areas where I can improve, uh, but I want it done so in a way that doesn't suggest inferiority on my part or, you know, have a boss that's, you know, um, exhibiting authoritative patronizing. Uh, and then I think this also ties back into the concept that we spoke about earlier in the ideal work environment. And, and I think it's important to have a mentor and a boss and someone who is going to, you know, uh, point out the good things that you do and give you credit for those and acknowledge, uh, because I, I think when you don't have that, you're missing a key piece and it can kind of become, uh, you know, just redundant and feel like, you know, they're just giving you criticism rather than really trying to help you progress in your career. So I think it's important uh, that it's done so in a way that is supportive uh, rather than just completely dominant. Okay, great. And I think for me, the reason I ask you all this question is, is I think for every new employee that uh, whoever that managing supervisor is, it's really important on the very first day when you have your departmental orientation or whether it's a third day in your organization, whatever day that happens to be, to sit down and really get to know that person on a personal level and ask them specifically, how do, how do you want to be coached? How do you want to be mentored? I think that's really key to making this transition successful in the workplace. Particularly whether you're staying in the same industry or you're going into a new role, that's key. I think the other thing is that each one of you said something a little bit different, which is the uniqueness of each person. And that's important to the supervisor to kind of know those pieces. But whether that mentor happens to be your supervisor or it's someone inside your organization or even someone outside your organization, you need to know that. The other thing I think is, is that, and I think Frank said this, when that communication happens and each one of you wants the communication in a little bit different way, but I think it's really important to be very direct because if they're not truthful, I'll say it that way, if they're not truthful, if something is off and they're, they don't feel that they can say that and they hold back when you can feel it and things don't get better. And eventually what happens with both parties, the supervisor and also the employee that you get frustrated and the employee starts thinking, Oh my goodness, I need to leave because I'm not getting what I want. And the supervisor's getting frustrated thinking I need to terminate this person because they're not living up to my expectations. But if we had started the conversation in the very beginning about how do you want to be coached? How do you want to be mentored? Um, and then also being really consistent about it and doing the follow-up and actually setting a schedule, whether that is, like Frank said, you know, 
really matter whether it's once a month, once a quarter, once a week, but really honoring the schedule and, and making sure that you both get what you need is really important. And once again, we're going to take a uh, short break. And when we come back, we're really going to talk about your passion, because this is important to me that you all get to really live out your passion every single day. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stay tuned. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back. This is BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and you're listening to Promotion Protocol, hosted by Dr. Kim Nugent. And today I have a panel of three, and we are talking about really uh, being successful in their careers, having found their dream job, really what their ideal work environment is, the important lessons that they've learned, and how they want to be coached and mentored. And now we're going to jump right into, so Crystal, what are you passionate about? Well, in no particular order, I would say um, my dog. I was going to say Roxy. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, Staying active and um, and serving the community um, is also a deep passion of mine. Um, I and and leading with that, so I'd be the first one to admit that I did not take as much time as I should have to volunteer when I was in school. I mean, I, when I was at UT, I worked um, three jobs. And so I barely made it to football games. I didn't have time. I, I, I paid for my own tuition um, for both undergrad and for, for law school. So, um, so I didn't get really that, that I didn't have that free time to, to do that, or I never took that time at least. But um, I'll tell you, as a Houstonian, Harvey changed everything for me. Um, I spent about six months after Harvey helping families do whatever I could to rebuild their homes um, from beginning to like mucking their homes to helping them whenever, however I could, um, cleaning out their houses and, and doing this with a team of people um, with a for a community here on the east side that was very deeply injured by the hurricane and are still recovering and may, may never fully recover. So, I mean, that experience where we helped lots of families and ultimately restoring homeowners completely from um, the ground up with the new home is incredibly rewarding for me personally. Um, and I was, I am very humbled by that experience. Um, and what was most important for me and, and what, how I guess tying into a passion, um, I recognized that by enlisting <laughs> forcibly my family, friends, coworkers, all of them, like, Hey, guess what we're doing this weekend? You know, guess what we get to do, uh, you know, for the next weekend, for the next six months, you're going to help me out with this big old project. It's never going to end. Um, you know, it was a team mission. 
Um, mm-hmm. and, and I found that like at work, you know, instead of maybe quick conversations around the water hole, you know, there were conversations turned to, Hey, how's this family doing? How's that family doing? And that really, that passion, um, to serve the community is really transcended into the workspace as well. That's great. And I think that people may have forgotten, those that are outside of Houston have forgotten about the Hurricane Harvey. But certainly people in Houston have not forgotten that. And I'm sure that you made a tremendous difference. And and you made a great point, which there are still families, businesses that have not recovered from Harvey and there's still work to be done. And that's really in any community. And unless you go through it yourself, it, the impact isn't quite as great. So whether that happens to be fires, whether that's earthquakes, whether that's flooding, whether that's hurricanes, whatever that happens to be, whatever that catastrophe, when the community comes together, it makes such a tremendous difference. So thank you for doing that. So Frank, what are you passionate about? I'm very passionate about my family, uh, my friends, and my faith. Um, just that, that just drives me every day. And, um, you know, when you're, when you're, talking about work or we make this a work conversation uh, i'm extremely passionate about continuous improvement uh, i have my six sigma green belt uh, which drives on con- continual improvement on the demaic uh, formula but um, not only as far as process improvement but improving the employees as well i i, I in my previous role i had 120 direct reports um, and that, that is a lot to manage, but when you can change someone's life for the better, just by having a five minute mentoring conversation that changing that person's life forever will just it gives you a, an amazing feeling that you can't buy or replicate. So, um, you know, that, that drives me, that makes every day worth living and worth going to work. So, uh, I love it. Great. Thank you very much. And I, I'm sure that those employees appreciate that. And I'm sure that if there are teachers listening today, they feel the same way about their students when that light bulb goes on or they're able to make a difference. And every one of you in your role is making a difference with your client or your patient or your employee. So what about you, Jared? What are you passionate about? We might have lost him, so <laughs> that's okay. So I think it's really important, and, and you all have, and I have talked about this before, and given, you know, the fact that you're young professionals, you're making a huge difference, you're building your reputation inside your careers, and, and you've already gotten promoted uh, at least once or twice at this point in time. So one of the things that I think is really important, given where you are in your career and your age is, if you could tell baby boomers something about you and your generation, what would it be? So, Crystal, let's go to you. I would tell baby boomers, hey, wanting balance doesn't make us lazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. I like that. What about you, Frank? What would you tell baby boomers? Um, not to put us in like a catch-all, um, you know, define us by our age because, mm-hmm. you know, just- we we have a hunger, we have a drive, and, you know, we're wanting to make a difference. Um, there are some of us who, you know, want the quick dime and, you know, want to be CEO tomorrow, but there are <laughs> others um, that, you know, really want to get after it and do it the right way. And, you know, I, I want them to see that, you know, we can contribute to the company. And I think Crystal mentioned something early, earlier, um, but I want to tell the baby boomers as well, you know, mentor us, you know, you have that experience, you have lived it. Um, you know, they have, you know, 20, 30 more years experience than we do, um, you know, inform us because that's, that's where you get that great advice from and, um, learning experience. Absolutely. And I like what you said, you know, as I start out the show today, I, I said, you know, I don't like stereotypes, regardless of what age and every single person, if we can look at it, we can take a step back and look, every single person has a unique gift or talent or strength that they can contribute. So rather than looking at something less than or you don't have this or you're different, whatever, you know, everyone does have a gift. And so for senior managers, I think it's really important to remember that because sometimes I think the older you get, while you have great experience, experience, you forget, you know, what you were like when you were 20 or 30 or 35. So I think it's a really important message. Jared, are you back with us? Yes, I am. Sorry about that. No problem. So what would you tell baby boomers about you and your generation? You know, I think it's kind of a common theme uh, between Frank and Crystal here. And I would just kind of uh, coattail off that and say, 
you know, millennial, I don't like hearing the word because sometimes it carries uh, a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. And, right. uh, you know, I would implore uh, baby boomers to not put all of us into that, that same group that sees, mm -hmm. uh, receives the negative exposure and, and realize that, you know, there are others out there, uh, you know, like us three here that are extremely motivated. And, you know, we just need to be given a chance to show what right. we can do and, and not be put, uh, you know, in the ones that, in that group of the right. ones that bring us down. Right. In the box. That's great comment. So we're going to take a break and stay tuned. And when we come back, we're going to talk about advice you'll have for younger professionals. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes and she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. -E -E and play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com and for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or bonniegp at aol.com. I am your host, Dr. Kim Nugent, and you're listening to Promotion Protocol. We're coming to you live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And today's show is really dedicated to focusing on three young professionals and the incredible difference they're making in the workplace today. And I want to circle back before I jump into a new question. And Jared, I would love to know what you're passionate about. Yes, yeah, so uh, thank you, Dr. Nugent. I, I think my, my passions really lie kind of uh, align with Frank's here. Um, you know, family, faith, and friends are definitely of the utmost importance to me. Uh, and, and, but beyond that, uh, you know, I think I love finding solutions to complex problems. Very passionate, like we've said before about sports, obviously, my physical health. Uh, but, you know, I'm also uh, personally a, a, a very passionate reader, and I think it's very important. Uh, to stay current, uh, reading fiction, nonfiction, you know, pleasure as well as staying up to date. And, and that's a real passion of mine. And I think it's, a, you know, an important driver of my success as well as uh, just being able to, uh, you know, have that circle of knowledge. I think it's very important as well. Well, and, and uh, I had a former boss who said, uh, leaders are readers, and I think that's really important. So if you're not, if, if reading isn't your thing, there's certainly a podcast or you know, Audible or some kind of mechanism to learn something new every single day. So thank you so much for that. So we're going to move on to the next question. You know, you all were giving a great advice, I think, to baby boomers in terms of not wanting me put in a box or a stereotype, and you really don't even want to resonate with that term called millennials and I totally agree with that so what advice though do you have for younger professionals who are just either just now graduating from college and just sort of starting on their career path what advice do you have for them so Crystal let's go to you so it sounds super cheesy but I would say don't give up I mean what's that saying nobody's ever drowned in their own sweat I think for for me personally, I've always felt like 
um, there's always this moment in time. It's either, it, it, and you can pinpoint it. It's either just before a test. Um, for me, it, it was definitely before the bar exam. These are moments where you have to put your head down and just get some work done. And, um, you know, there, there's always, you know, birthdays, events, you know, other things you'd rather be doing, meeting your friends down having drinks at the bar, watching sports on ESPN, Jared. But if you just invest those few moments in time, the moments when you want to quit, you know, it really just, it pays off. Absolutely. I appreciate that. What about you, Frank? What advice can you give younger professionals on career success? Yeah, I think we're at a time where, you know, the, the younger generation who's graduating college now is, you know, looking to make money fast, wants to be CEO overnight. You know, I kind of saw that, lived it myself and, you know, came to a harsh realization really quickly. <laughs> um, you know, you got YouTube sensations making millions of dollars and, um, you know, everybody's trying to be that or a musician mm-hmm. or what have you. But, um, you know, kind of goes back to, you know, what makes me successful, but, you know, be the hardest worker in the room go above and beyond, be do, willing to do what others aren't. And, um, you know, to both of my, you know, co-hosts on the show, um, you know, be willing to get uncomfortable. Uh, I just read a book called Can't Hurt Me. And um, in the book, the author goes to say that where you think you're 100% is, I can't go past that. You're only at 40%. Uh, they call it the 40% rule. So, um, you know, get uncomfortable and realize what you can really get out of yourself because you're capable of so much more than you even realize. That's great. Love that. And I love the fact that you shared a book. That's fantastic. What about you, Jared? What advice can you give younger professionals on career success? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, kind of take a page out of Frank's book here and, and get a book. Also, um, Extreme Ownership by uh, uh, Jocko Willing and Leif Babin. Yep, there you go. Um, they have some what's called extreme ownership. And, you know, I think a lot of young professionals today um, expect uh, too much too fast. And, you know, they come out of college thinking the degree entitles them immediately to something more. Uh, and then a lot of times that can lead to them placing the blame uh, on someone else for them not – achieving their uh, professional goals and their pursuit of opportunity rather than looking within and how this book states that you're responsible and you need to take ownership for everything that happens to you. So I think it's a shift of expectations that needs to occur and, and not be too scared or frustrated when things don't, you know, initially go your way and keep putting in that time and work. And, you know, eventually the, the opportunity will arise and, and it's your responsibility to seize it. Uh, you know, the, the next step is up to you. The college degree does not guarantee a dream job. It's the only be- the beginning, and it's only the first step. Great. Thank you. Um, you all have um, – I love the fact that you both have suggested a book, and I'm going to give you a few more minutes to think about maybe another book or maybe a podcast that you like or a TED Talk, and I'm going to ask you that question in just a second. But I was – as you were talking, I wanted to share a book that I've just finished reading, which is Triggers by Marshall Goldsmith. And if you haven't seen Marshall Goldsmith, uh, you should check him out on YouTube. He's like the number one business coach in the United States, and he has some really great ways – about and great questions that you can ask yourself every day. You don't even need a coach to do that, but he does believe in accountability and having a coach so you can go through that. And there's six questions that you ask yourself every day to see if you're truly making a difference. And I love that book. I love everything that he's written so far. So any other books, either any one of you, like Crystal, is there a book that you would recommend to the group? I can't say enough good stuff about Michelle Obama's current book becoming I'm in the middle of it right now I'm a pianist and I came from humble beginnings and in the beginning of her book she mentions this moment in time where she is always practiced and practiced and practiced on this piano where there's this you know it's a damaged piano it does it's totally out of tune but she can always find middle C because the, the key is chipped and then you know she goes to her first recital and it's this glamorous, this gorgeous piano and um, she can't find middle C and she's 
she's prepared, she's been studying, and, and that, in the book, that, for me, that was a very um, pivotal, uh, a very, very, very meaningful statement of Michelle, because I think what she was saying is essentially that she felt like some a battle that she's always faced in her life is feeling out, almost out of place. Um, and, and for me, that resonated as well with all of the hard work that I put in, sometimes being put in, um, you know, uh, in, a, in a rag to riches story and has been put in the, the positions that I am now, um, I certainly feel like sometimes I can't find middle C without the help of others. Great. That's a great way to end this segment. And we're going to wrap up our show in just a few minutes. But first, we're going to take a break and come back. And I'm going to be with my panel and ask a few more questions, and then we'll end the show. Stay tuned. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com. Jobsannex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes, and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at jobsannex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. Jobsannex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Welcome back to Promotion Protocol Live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm Dr. Kim Nugent, and I hope that you've enjoyed listening to our panel so far. We're in the final segment of our show, and I wanted to ask each one of you, you know, you've talked about great things, about lessons that you've learned, your ideal work environment, how you want to be coached or mentored, what you're passionate about. You've given some great advice to baby boomers and younger professionals. But what do you want to accomplish personally and professionally in the next three years? Because now we want to look towards the future. So, Crystal, I'll start with you. For me, uh, partnership, definitely professionally, um, is my goal um, and how you hope to accomplish that over the next three years. And personally, I know millennials aren't supposed to want to buy a house, but this one does. <laughs> And it's on the top of the list. I keep looking. I've got the HAR app, or where Houstonians know that app to be the one that you need when you are looking for right. houses. And um, anyways, uh, so getting a house, um, I've got plenty of places on my list that I need to travel to. And um, and I've got lots of more runcations in store. So that's what's Um, those are my professional and personal goals over the next three years. Fabulous. What about you, Frank? What do you want to accomplish personally and professionally in the next three years? Uh, Professionally, I just took on a new job in October. I'm extremely excited about. So um, the next three years will just be getting proficient in my role, Mm -hmm. um, getting results in that role, and continual process improvements. Um, driving for improvement within my team, building a stronger team. Um, personally, 
uh, you know, work on my personal fitness, you know, get healthier, eat healthier, be healthier. It's not just a New Year's resolution this year. We'll make 2019 different and 20 and 21 as well. But, um, and then really build my network as far as, you know, my professional network, you know, really grow that to, you know, better myself and better my career in the future. Great. Thank you so much. And what about you, Jared? What do you want to accomplish professionally and personally? Well, mine, uh, just along the lines of what Crystal said, also uh, a millennial buying a house. Uh, that definitely is something I see myself doing within the next three years. Um, also continuing uh, traveling. Just went uh, on a two-week two week vacation to Italy last year. And uh, want to, you know, planning on Costa Rica this year, so just want to keep that going. I think that's, you know, very important to get away uh, from what I say reality sometimes, and um, get married, and then also add another uh, puppy to go along with my two-year-old Golden Doodle Jax, who is so much fun. And then professionally, I uh, want to complete my MBA uh, with honors, I'm finishing up my first year right now and uh, continue to expand my knowledge within my industry um, as I take on more responsibility and keep, keep adding on to my career capital. Fantastic. I appreciate that. So I know that given where you all are in your careers, I am certain that you'll accomplish all of the things that you have in store for yourself professionally and personally. And so um, once again, you've blown away the stereotypes and I just hope that people are really listening and kind of take another look at the talent that's in the workplace today. Uh, we're going to wrap up our show in just a few minutes, but I wanted to share with you all uh, next week, we have a guest, Erica Dura who is an employment attorney as well as a consultant and her specialty really is civility in the workplace as well as unconscious bias and so for more information if you enjoyed today's show I'd love for you to go to www.promotionprotocol.com to check out free articles on workplace subjects and uh, thank you for listening and getting yourself back on tack to promotability and career success this is Dr. Kim New host of Promotion Protocol, and we're live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I look forward to having you all listening to our show next Saturday with Erica Dureas. In the meantime, have a great week. This has been Promotion Protocol with host Kim Nugent. Tune in each week as Kim gives you practical tools to redefine and lead your way to career success and create your legacy. Here on Promotion Protocol with Dr. Kim Nugent. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.